Hello! Today I'm going to read a story. Since I've been teaching about fractions, I thought I'd read a story about fractions. Circumference and the Fracton Fair. <clears throat> Lots of my students have heard this story before, but I think it's, bear, it's worth um, repeating. I think it's really fun. Fine fabrics, fresh cheese, bah, bah. It was the opening morning of the Fracton Fair. Such a merry atmosphere, said Lady Di of Amateur. She and Circumference strolled jauntily through the crowds with their friend Reginald Parton, the Earl of Fracton. The two men stopped to watch a sword swallower while Lady Di wandered over to a cloth merchant's booth. She ran her hand over a length of fabric. How perfectly soft, she exclaimed. <clears throat> The merchant smiled. You can buy all or part, he said. Hmm, he's pointing to the sign above her. What do those ladies, what do those numbers mean? Lady Di asked. <clears throat> They're fracton numbers, my lady. The woman answered. They are used to measure equal pieces of something such as this beautiful cloth. Why is one number below the other? asked Di. The bottom number is called the denominator, the seller explained. It shows how many parts are in a whole. She drew lines on the material with a soap sliver, dividing the fabric into equal sections. Four in all? asked Lady Di. Yes, my lady, answered the woman. That's what the bottom numbers mean, she said, pointing again to the sign. And here's a picture of the fractions. And what if I just want one part of the four, asked Lady Di. The numerator or top number tells me how many parts of the cloth you want. In this case, it would be one, said the woman. Lady Di printed the fracton number one-fourth on the first section of the cloth. Indeed, that's one-fourth, replied the merchant. And two parts of the four would be two-fourths. Three parts of the four are three-fourths. And the entire length is four fourths or one whole, which you all know. <laughs> Lady Di smiled. I'm partial to red fabric. Have you any? The merchant nodded and bent down. Hmm, that's odd, my lady. My red material seems to be missing. I'm so sorry, my lady. And she excused herself and hurried away to check with the neighboring cloth sellers. At this point, Circumference and the Earl approached, each hungry enough to eat half a horse. Soft curds here, bellowed a portly cheesemonger. Wheels of cheese, parts or whole. I'll take one half of that Wensleydale wheel, said the Earl. I'd like two fourths of that Cheshire wheel, said Lady Di. She thought of her lesson on the numerators. Two pieces meant she could save one for later. I'm, I'm so hungry I'll have mm, this much of the Stilton, said Circumference, pointing to four eighths on the sign. He thought the bigger numbers meant more cheese. But when the portions were cut, they were the same amount. They are equivalent, explained the cheesemonger. The Stilton is cut into smaller pieces, so there are more of them. Here, I'll cut the cheddar wheel and you'll see. <gasps> Wait a tick, where is it? Missing cheese? Lady Di remembered the missing red cloth. Was it just a coincidence? Hmm. Tucked away from the hubbub, six men were divvying up a round of tangy cheddar and looking over a pile of other stolen goods from the fair. Well done, lads, bad old Barnaby said to his brigand band. We've pitched some right proper stuff we have. Spread out beside them were meats, breads, ale, yarn, fabric, purses, coins, and four fluffy sheep. That cloth was the easiest pickings I ever did pilfer, chortled one of Barnaby's men. By now, almost everyone at the fair was missing something people surrounded the Earl, all talking at once. The Earl's head sheep shearer pushed forward. My Lord, he exclaimed. 
One third of your finest sheep are missing. We had a dozen to clip, but four are gone. Thieves, growled the Earl. They desire easy gain. Let's think like a thief so we can catch the culprit. A plan was quickly hatched. It's a long shot, but it might work. Our puppeteer will set the trap, the Earl said, and fracton numbers will do nine tenths of the work. At high noon, the performance began. It featured Fracton's two favorite puppets, the diminutive half pint and the sizable pottle. Oh, pottle, a huge golden coin. Let's fly up there and grab it. Such a half-baked idea is no surprise coming from a half-wit like you. The audience roared with laughter. Perhaps a kind member of our audience could get the coin for us. On the whole, not a half bad idea, unless he or she is partly tempted to keep it. You got that right, Barnaby snickered, poking one of his mates in the ribs. The brigand band had returned to enjoy the performance. I've got a half mad idea. Let's give the coin to the person who finds the largest fracton number. Slips like this one are half hidden all about the fair. Bring your findings here by half past two. Our one-sixth sense tells us we'll have a winner. The audience sprang into action. A gold sovereign was enough money to buy a small farm. The thief will want that coin, the Earl said to Circumference and Lady Di. We had no stealing before the fair began, so we think the thief is an outsider to Fracton. And you wager that an outsider would think a number like that one sixteenth is bigger than something like one third because the denominator is larger, said Lady Di. Yes, I made that my st mistake myself, admitted Circumference. But now I realize that the larger the denominator, the smaller each part is. And the higher the numerator, the more parts there are. We learned this when we had pizza fractions, didn't we, friends? People were having fun searching. Fracton numbers were discovered in unusual places. A small girl noticed a seven ninths between two slices of bread. This could be the winning number, she said excitedly. Barnaby and his band kept their eyes peeled for fracton numbers. They observed a woman unwrapping a one half from around a wool wax jar they dismissed it. Too small, Barnaby said to his men. Half is too small? Oh no. A young boy and his father spotted a 132nd slip. That's 1 over 32. The denominator is 32. Oh, such a tiny fracton number, moaned the boy. Ah, leave it, son. No one would be stupid enough to want that. They left it on a lunch table where Barnaby took it. Oh, their plan is working. Ho, 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 lads, he chuckled. We're in luck now, we are. Big numbers, this must be the winning ticket. The tower bells rang at half past two. Would everyone with a slip step forward, the Earl asked the crowd, and please line up by number size. I'm here in the middle, said the woman with one half. Mine's a bit larger than one half, said a boy with five eighths. This one is larger still, I think, said the little girl with seven ninths. The slip holders jostled about, but finally everyone was in order, with Barnaby proudly standing on one end with one thirty-second, and sweet little Madeline Elizabeth Holpart on the other with one over one. I hope all of you are now yelling into your computer saying, one over one, that's the biggest one. That's 100%, that's the whole part, right? The gentleman with one thirty-second called the puppet master as the holder of the smallest fracton number, you may award the golden coin to the winner who holds the one whole slip. No, 
house, screeched Barnaby. My number is the biggest. The coin's mine. And he ran toward the gold sovereign. The Earl blocked him. Defeated, Barnaby and his brigand band turned and fled. They were too fast, the Earl said, returning to the puppet theater after a fruitless chase. But we found the stolen goods. Those half dozen ruffians were a whole heap of trouble, said Circumference. But they fell to pieces in the end, exclaimed the Earl happily. The village of Fracton and its Earl continued to be famous for sheep, the fair, and the unique way they wrote their numbers. Those numbers became known as Fractons in Angleland. People used them when they wanted to represent parts of things. Today, we call them fractions. Now, boys and girls, do you remember when we had our, our pizza and we cut them all up into pieces and we realized if I cut a pizza up into, let's say, tenths, then each piece was tiny. Each piece was very small. If we cut them into fourths, each piece was bigger, right? And we ended up cutting our pizzas into fourths so that we could have as big of a piece as possible. And they were delicious, weren't they? But then we were joking and saying, well, what if we cut our pizzas into one halves? Well, if you cut a pizza in half, aren't you gonna eat a lot of pizza? You're gonna eat half a pizza, that's a lot. A half of a pizza is quite a bit. But what about the one over one, the one whole? That's the entire pizza. That's the biggest one of all. So remember, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the size of the piece, okay? The smaller the denominator, the bigger the size. Small denominators mean bigger. Big denominators mean smaller, okay? Have fun practicing all your fraction work. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.